The next pathogen in the pathogen parade is Borrelia burgdorferi. Borrelia burgdorferi is one of the most common vector-borne diseases. About 60, there's about 63,000 confirmed cases in 2022 in the United States. And the CDC estimates that around 476,000 new cases appear each year. Why are those numbers so different? Not every case gets reported and the CDC makes an estimate on how many of them do get reported and then makes a guess. Lyme disease, which Borrelia burgdorferi causes, is endemic to certain areas. There's only certain places and this is from 2021 and it shows you where cases appear in the United States. And as you can see, it's the northeastern U.S. and then north central Wisconsin, Michigan and Minnesota. You will see lots of cases of Lyme disease and this is where the insect vector is common in the United States. One of the reasons we're covering Lyme disease is the incidence of Lyme disease. While it stayed about five cases per 100,000 for a long time, it has now since increased. And before the pandemic, it was creeping up towards 15. During the pandemic, obviously it dropped a lot because people weren't getting around and getting outdoors. Now it's jumped significantly in 2022. So the number of cases is growing and this is a significant illness. So let's talk about the pathogen and properties. Unlike any of the other pathogens that we talked about, B. burgdorferi is a spirochete. And what that means is that it has this corkscrew morphology, as you can see here, right? These long corkscrew cells. This shape, this corkscrew shape, is important in its pathology, as you will see in a minute. Analysis of sequencing data from isolates has shown that the bacteria that cause the disease are phylogenetically and genotypically divergent. They have lots of differences in between the different organisms that cause it. Uh, the spirochete is about 10 to 30 microns long and it's narrow. It's about 0.2 to 0.5 microns in width. It has a very interesting genome. It has one linear chromosome of about 900 KB and it has 21 plasmids, nine of which are linear. This organism is not that free living in the soil. In fact, it's pretty much metabolically dependent on its hosts. This is a vector borne disease. The ticks from the genus Ixodes spread the disease. All are much smaller than common wood ticks. And you can see that here. Here's a close up of the deer tick as it's called. But you'll also see, here's an example of a nymph, a juvenile, and an adult tick. And you can see that's the head of a pin and that's incredibly small. The rate of B. burgdorferi infection of ticks it varies widely from 3 to 50% in the various surveys that they've done. Infection in human occurs obviously when they're bit by an infected tick. Okay, when you are bit by an infected tick, there's several stages to the disease. Uh, stage one occurs seven to 14 days after transmission from a tick, and you'll get a classic bullseye rash. Only in about 75% of cases, and here's an example of this bullseye rash. And this is the, the spirochete invading various tissues and causing inflammation. Uh, you will have fever, you'll feel crummy, malaise, and then flu-like symptoms, and these will dissipate. But the the bacterium is not gone. It will it then disseminates through the skin and blood and lymph. After about three to four weeks, this rash will subside. Stage two occurs when you have systemic infection. The bacterium is now spread throughout the body and it can be at multiple sites and you'll get multiple rashes at these various sites. It can infect the nervous system or the heart and again, you will have instances of fatigue, chills, and fever, and body aches. Stage three, there's further penetration, and this can be quite a few months or years past the initial infection. You'll get infections of the joints and Lyme arthritis, which is a painful inflammation of the joints, which was first mistaken as rheumatoid arthritis. You can get erosion of cartilage and or bone in some cases, 
you can get nerve and spinal cord damage occurring and it can actually cause dementia in some people and then there can be serious infections of the heart. Okay, those are the stages of the disease. B. burgdorferi pathogenesis. Virulence determinants vary between strains, but in all cases they have a unique mobility of drilling into tissues. That corkscrew morphology allows them to drill into tissues and penetrate where other pathogens might not. And this is why it can spread so systemically into the nervous system, into bones, into the heart. They have adhesins that help them bind to and invade tissues. So as they're traveling through the bloodstream, these adhesins will help them stick to epithelial tissues. And then they can drill through those tissues in through, drill through the epithelium into other tissues beyond. They are also good at degrading, degrading the host extracellular matrices and pushing between cells, etc. Finally, they have antigenic variation. They will vary the surf proteins on their surface so that when the immune system builds up a resistance to one, it switches the protein and now they're disguised again. Diagnosis. How is this diagnosed? First of all, it's extremely difficult to diagnose. Lyme disease simply from the presentation of the symptoms. The early stages can be confused with the flu or other viral infections, although the bullseye rash, if it appears, is a reasonable suggestion that you have this infection. Later complaints of joint pain can be mistaken for other types of arthritis. Neurological signs can be misconstrued as multiple sclerosis, and I know of people who've been diagnosed with MS to only find out later they had Lyme disease. Uh, clinical isolation is rarely done due to difficulty in culturing this organism. So how do you diagnose the disease? The disease is diagnosed by checking for antibodies against the pathogen. It's a blood test and so you run this blood test. If that blood test is positive, then further tests may be done to confirm that it actually is uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. Treatment in this case is actually pretty straightforward. Doxycycline is a semi-synthetic derivative of tetracycline that is extremely effective. Most patients respond well to treatment. If it fails, a second round of antibiotic therapy normally works. Now, doxycycline is really nice for treating this disease because this is an antibiotic that can penetrate membranes. So when you take it, it penetrates into all of your body. No matter where B. burgdorferi is hiding, the antibiotic can get to it and kill it. A new vaccine against Lyme disease recently passed phase three trials. This is a component vaccine of OSPA from six serotypes of the bacterium. And OSPA is a protein that's on the outer surface of the, ba of the bacterium. If you're interested, you can go to this link right here and read more about that vaccine. Okay, that's it for B. burgdorferi.